In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My greetings to all those who are viewing this Mass uh, via News Center One and their uh, kind assistance in broadcasting a Sunday Mass for us throughout uh, the, the viewing area. We are in the chapel here at the Chancery in downtown Rapid City, and I promise that as I offer Mass, I have you and your, attention, and your intentions excuse me, in mind. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you will honor the Holy One. You will honor the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs and all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High, to proclaim your kindness at dawn, your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. 
Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's wonderful for this televised mass that we have a choir today. You know, not just um, a cantor, but a choir. Things are going back to normal. We're emerging from the pandemic, and we rejoice that we're able to uh, gather in a heartier way to celebrate this mass today. It says in the gospel for this 11th Sunday of the year that with many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them. In today's passage from St. Mark, the Lord teaches in parables. In fact, he uses two parables. One, he says, the kingdom of God is like a man who scatters seed and it grows in a way that he cannot understand. And in the second parable, more familiar to us, he talks about the mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that is tiny but grows into the largest of shrubs. So what I'd like to do today is to review what parables are and why Jesus uses them, why he teaches in parables. And then to look at the two parables specifically that he uses in the gospel this Sunday and draw out their lessons for us. So first, the fact that Jesus teaches in parables. What is a parable and why does Jesus teach in this way? First of all, a parable, it's not a difficult definition to remember, is a brief comparison between the kingdom of God 
and some familiar experience from the daily life of the people to whom Jesus is speaking. Right? So in this Sunday's parables, we have a farmer sowing seed, very familiar to the people that Jesus lived among and was speaking to. And the mustard seed, they all knew the mustard seed was so tiny and grew into this large shrub. Jesus using parables, these simple stories, is a very effective way of teaching. Why does Jesus use parables? Why does he teach in this way? It is effective, but there's kind of a two-edged sword here. He uses parables for two reasons. The first one is that he wants to conceal. He wants to conceal from the faithless what he wants to proclaim to those who are open. So Jesus teaches in parables to conceal his message from those who are intently opposing him and trying to uh, put an end to his ministry. You know, their intention of combating him and opposing him will blind them to these simple messages because they're not open. And so he intentionally uses these parables to conceal the message of the kingdom of God from them. Not that he doesn't love them, but he wants to teach in a way where those who are open understand, and he doesn't want to give any fuel to those who are opposing him. So first of all, he uses parables to conceal from the faithless what he is trying to say. And secondly, he uses parables to reveal, to reveal the mystery of his mission to those who believe and embrace his message, to those who are open and humble. So in short, parables draw us into divine mysteries according to the message Jesus is delivering, and the level of our faith, our openness to him. So now that we remember what parables are and we have a new appreciation for why Jesus teaches in this way, let's look at the two parables he tells this Sunday. First of all, the parable of the man scattering seed. This is found only in St. Mark's Gospel, by the way. You won't find it in the other three. The Lord here compares the kingdom of God to the mystery of natural organic growth. Do you ever stop and think about how plant growth happens? We take it so much for granted. This year I've kind of planted some flowers and pots on my deck, but I didn't start them from seed. Although my next door neighbor planted a bunch of seeds in his garden and I could see him putting those seeds in the ground, covering them up, you know, watering the soil and waiting for the light and warmth of the coming summer months, and now those plants are growing. They're springing up from the ground. A seed seems lifeless, doesn't it? But when planted, watered, and given light, it grows. There's a life force in it. There's a life force in it. And the kingdom of God is like that. It has an unstoppable life force contained within it. Second, the parable of the mustard seed. This parable is based on the difference or the contrast between that small, the smallest of seeds, and the great shrub it grows into. The Lord is teaching us that the kingdom of God begins small and gradually grows into a large refuge, like that mustard seed grows into a mustard bush that the birds of the air can take shelter in. Do you ever get discouraged by your little faith or what seems like insignificant growth in your spiritual life. I think we all do at times. You get discouraged with scandals in the church or the lack of participation sometimes in parish life. Yes, of course we do. You get discouraged by the grinding secularization of our culture that just seems to push faith further and further away. I do as a bishop, of course. It's a great challenge to address that and that movement in our culture. Remember these parables as you have those concerns. You know, the kingdom of God is like that farmer scattering the seed, and it grows how he doesn't understand. This mysterious life force that is the kingdom of God will continue to grow in our midst. And even though it looks like it's just so small and making gradual progress, it will grow and grow and grow into the refuge that saves sinners. We walk by faith, in other words, and not by sight. The kingdom of God has a life force behind it, and it grows from small and tiny beginnings to greatness if we have the eyes of faith and the openness to see what the Lord is doing in our midst.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With grateful hearts, let us turn to the Father with our prayers. For the church, that the seed of faith planted in the heart of each believer may grow into a bountiful manifestation of God's reign in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials, that God will help them to fulfill their duties, seek the truth and the common good in all the issues that arise, and be open to learning from one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the diocese, that we scatter God's word through our work, daily activities, and conversations so that many people may encounter Christ today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that God will bless and strengthen those preparing for or recovering from surgery, restore them to health, and fill their hearts with peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Wayne Itesca, that God's glory will shine upon them and that they may share in the peace and joy of God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As the reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.